The Delaware Riverkeeper Network presented the Delaware River Basin Commission with Valentine's Day messages signed by 2,100 people who want the DRBC to schedule seven public hearings for the Penny's Pipeline project. The messages were presented at the DRBC's February 10th public meeting. Only one of the DRBC's five commissioners attended the hearing. Hi, I'm Maya Van Rossum. I'm the Delaware Riverkeeper here on behalf of the Delaware Riverkeeper Network. And Krista is also from the Delaware Riverkeeper Network staff here representing the members and communities that we represent. And we are here today in the spirit of Valentine's. And while Valentine's traditionally is a day to show care and love for the people who are special in our lives, we believe that Valentine's Day is also a reminder of how important it is to show care and regard for the others who exist in our community, who live in our community, and for the other people who touch our lives directly and indirectly. So we are here today as a community to deliver Valentine's care to you. We bring to you large Valentine's signed by over 2,100 individuals who care about our river and who care about our commun communities. And we are bringing to you bouquets of flowers to remind you of the love that, and the beauty that nature can bring when we take care of it. With Valentine's Day coming, we really do need um, the commission to be sweethearts when it comes to protecting this valley. Uh, please um, do not double date with FERC. Um, <laughs> Do not, um, you know, listen to their violins. Uh, we're more concerned, though, about uh, pennies trying to, you know, bring hearts and flowers. And quite frankly, pennies will only break your heart. Uh, and so we're here today to, to call on you to have seven hearings uh, and to have an independent review because, you know, quite frankly, um, you know, Valentine's Day is a time of, you know, really being with people that you care about, and, uh, and this is a valley we all care about and we all love. And so on Valentine's Day, we should really think about this valley. And I have here some cards from our members um, who live in the valley, and I will give them up, but I just wanted to, this is Be a Sweetheart this Valentine's Day, and it's signed by our members of the 100 uh, chapter of the Sierra Club. Just uh, And I wanted to start off in my comments first by saying Happy Valentine's Day. I don't want any flowers. Uh, but obviously we're asking the DRBC to be a sweetheart to democracy, to allow the public to comment and weigh in at seven independent hearings across this watershed on Penn East. And I want to kind of reference you know, this request with a, just a broader reality in American democracy right now. Because last night, history was made. You had two anti-establishment candidates win in the New Hampshire primary, Bernie Sanders and Donald J. Trump. And they won by, as Mr. Trump would say, huge margins, 20%. And they won very different candidates, but they had very similar messages in some ways. Anger at, at government, a mistrust of, of the democratic process as it exists right now, and mistrust of, of a, political, a politically powerful interest, especially those on Wall Street. And it, you know, when we're looking at the representative process here in this country right now, obviously the DRBC only plays a small portion in it. But to, you know, but to allow the public to have a say and to la have a say that's not just at one hearing for two minutes is incredibly important. Targeting preserved lands, including C1 streams, important bird areas, and preserved farms, the proposed Penny's pipeline will have a devastating effect on the Delaware River Basin's already fragile biodiversity. These lands were preserved to protect our remaining areas of high biodiversity, lands and streams that are stressed but still have intact ecosystems. The degradation of these areas will result in the loss of functioning ecosystems that protect the water quality and biodiversity of the Delaware River Basin. Important bird areas are spaces that contain large number of birds and or rare birds and the taxa that the birds depend upon. The important bird areas are the healthiest habitats that are left in an overdeveloped area. Compromising them would have a negative impact on the region's biodiversity, possibly driving some species to local extinction. Penn East is downplaying the environmental damage the proposed pipeline will cause. Washington's Cross and Audubon Society has conducted extensive research projects in one of these important bird areas, the Ted Style Preserve at Ball Payton Mountain, 
we know what is on the ground. We know the incredible biodiversity in some of our remaining wildlands. Because FERC initially approves projects before feasibility is fully determined without requiring detailed analyses of water body, body crossings, they prevent the public from com commenting in an informed way. So if the public shows up at a hearing and they don't have the information ahead of time, they're unable to speak intelligently on the subject. Instead, FERC habitually approves projects before feasibility is determined, thus locking in routes with, with often unnecessary devastation. Thank you. FERC itself is getting, as uh, Ms. Hutter just mentioned, uh, increasingly bad press for accepting partial information, incorrect information, and not demanding uh, thorough information. The public is beginning to realize the perfidy of the Penn East Pipeline Group, the poor research and the poor responses to requests for environmental and other information. And I've been observing as, as a news junkie uh, the technique used by many pipeline companies. They begin construction before a thorough review is completed. Then when in the mid-construction, when problems are suddenly discovered, it's too late to undo the construction or to stop it. And we have an example right nearby in Princeton and Montgomery Township with the Williams Transco pipeline, which has nothing to do with FERC, uh, but it is a large pipeline. Um, and what they've done is they've suddenly discovered that the Princeton Ridge has rock underneath it, and now they have to do a very damaging method of stream crossing, uh, which was not part of their original plan. And I do not understand how they did not know that Princeton Ridge has hard rock under it. So I'd like to ask you, please do not align this commission with this sleazy group and the bad press with this Penn East mess and have your separate meetings. Thank you. Well, in this scenario, we're your friends. We're the people that you can reach out to and listen to, and we'll help make sure you don't jump into a bad relationship with Penn East. <laughs> Said, I'm not mean to be a downer. Um, Andrea Bonet already mentioned uh, the Transco mess happening in Montgomery where they discovered bedrock. Well, that's really important because that same bedrock is here uh, all along the Penn East route. There's a lot of bedrock. And as you all know, probably that you know bedrock is that secondary porosity that these communities have. So if there's any kind of blasting or disturbance, the water stored in the cracks, the cracks close up, and all of a sudden there's a serious, serious risk. So I want to give you a little teaser of some of the friends you might meet if you were to come to, out to see us. Um, biologists Jill Dodds and Debbie Krasser, they can speak to you about Kingwood and how uh, their bedrock is 20 inches or less or 60 inches from the surface. The pipe construction, okay, will run 84 inches and because of that shallow bedrock there's going to be blasting throughout the entire length of Kingwood. Okay, that's seven miles of blasting. We are asking you to accept this Valentine. Um, we're hoping it will warm your heart um, to show your love for the Delaware River watershed. Um, let the people be heard. Protect the hundreds of thousands of people and communities that depend on the Delaware River watershed for drinking water and so much more. Um, everybody knows 108 miles of pipeline crossing 88 waterways, 44 wetlands, 30 parks, and dozens of communities is going to have a tremendous impact on the Delaware River. Um, and this kind of hearing here without the full commission is not doing it justice. Doing a joint hearing with the wholly owned subsidiary of the fossil fuel industry, FERC, is not doing this issue justice. Uh, you have said that you're committed to a public process that affords interested persons an opportunity to comment on issues of concern to them. That's a direct quote. Um, your actions fly in the face of that. Um, you need to have at least seven independent public hearings where the people are when the people can get there throughout the watershed uh, shame on you for not making any kind of commitments yet it's not too late fix it be a sweetheart